you go, buddy. It's that f***ing cold. This is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done. I've done my fair share of GTN challenges over the years, and today I thought I'd hand it over to Heather and James. And to be honest, I think I'd be pretty terrible at this one anyway. Well, thanks, Mark. I'm hoping you've got a good book or something, because this is going to be a long day. Yeah, we have come to Lake 32 in the Cotswolds with the attempt to swim 3.8 kilometres, cycle 180k and run 42k, all without any fuel. Yeah, it's going to take us, well, it's going to take us a long time if we manage to do it all. So I think we better get going sooner rather than later because I'd kind of like to finish while it's still daylight. Yeah. Well, we are going to be fasted for the whole day, which means the last time we ate was last night. But a quick caveat, we would not recommend doing this at home. We've got a medic on site. We're going to be measuring our blood glucose, so safety is covered. We are, however, allowed fluids. So that includes water, electrolytes, and importantly for James, caffeine. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd survive without my morning caffeine hit. So I've had that, Come some black coffees. Yeah, I mean, I needed that. Those are going to wear off pretty soon, and then uh, you might see Hangry James, but mm. we better get going before he arrives. <laughs> Just think, guys, the sooner you finish, the sooner you can have some food. I'll be here to support, don't worry. So good luck. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So whilst these crazy kids are swimming, let me explain the course that they're going to be undertaking here at Lake 32 in the Cotswolds. For the swim, they're going to be doing two 1500 meter laps before moving on to two 400 meter laps for a grand total of 3.8 kilometers. After a swift transition, they will then head out onto a tried and tested bike loop used by triathlon events run from this lake. It's a 28 kilometer loop, so they will attempt to complete the loop six times and then finish with a short six kilometer out and six kilometer back section to make it up to 180 kilometers. If they've made it that far, I suspect we will see a less swift transition into the run and then they will attempt to do laps of the lake. 3.4 kilometer laps meaning they will need to do around 12 laps to make it up to 42.2 kilometers. Ouch. This is a somewhat risky challenge today. So safety is paramount. As Heather has mentioned, they're using glucose monitors on their arms. So they're gonna be tracking their blood sugar levels. If they get dangerously low, we're obviously gonna act on that. We've also got a medic here on site and they're gonna be keeping an eye on them. We're gonna be tracking them throughout the whole course. And also I'm gonna be standing on the roadside and also just checking as to whether they're okay. And again, we'll act on that. And of course, as soon as they finish, as and when they want to finish, they can make that call. We've got food, sugar, everything ready. In terms of the swim, they look like they're doing all right. They kind of look like they're swimming together. James slightly ahead. Um, yeah, be interesting to see how they get on. Which pocket should I put my gels in? <laughs> oh my. Um, so we're looking pretty stable, 116 milligrams. It's on my way down right now, but um, yeah. I've like got over my dizziness, so that was nothing to do with blood glucose. I think that's purely due to being horizontal for an hour or so plodding along. Now it's for the left side bit. And slightly longer. Bit. All right. 
Right, they're both out on the bike, so I thought I'd stop for a second and explain a bit of the science. Now, glucose is ordinarily the main source of energy for our bodies, and that's stored as glycogen in the liver and muscles. But there's a finite amount, normally around 2,000 calories, and that obviously needs to keep getting topped up. Whereas our fat stores or fat reserves are far greater, normally in the region of around 50,000 calories. And this is where Fat Max comes in, which is basically the maximum amount of fat that they can burn per hour. Now, Heather and I actually did a little experiment on this a couple of years back, and I have the results here. Uh, so my Fat Max was 0.83 grams per minute at 14 kilometers an hour, and that was my Fat Max, whereas Heather was 0.78 grams per minute at 12 kilometers an hour. But of course, they're starting with limited glycogen stores, and they're not going to be replenishing them as they go. So they are very much going to be to be relying upon their fat reserves. But this is where things get interesting because glycogen can be metabolized far quicker than fat. So to make use of that fat, they're going to need to slow the pace down. And this is where something called fat max comes in. The maximum amount of fat that you can burn in an hour. Now for an ordinary person, even at the top end of ordinary, they might be able to burn one gram of fat per minute. And if they train that over the course of three or four weeks, they might be able to get up to one and a half grams of fat per minute. So you kind of get the idea. This is going to be tough and very much about pacing. How they get on, I'm not so sure. As to put this into context, ordinarily during Ironman, you can burn anywhere between seven to 10,000 calories. And many of the pros are training their gut to be able to tolerate in excess of 90 grams of carbs per hour. Heather and James are taking zero in. I mean, ordinarily by this point, you'd have had a good breakfast before, maybe a gel on the start lane, come out of the swim, had another gel. And I mean, for myself, I'm probably having a gel every 20 to 30 minutes. Again, nothing for these two. I mean, I think James, he has trained himself to be able to do a lot of sessions and be able to actually switch over to using the fat reserves probably quite a lot during his career and experience that a number of times during some of these long distance races. Heather probably has less experience in that. However, what she does have is that many times she actually underfuels for events and she'll even admit it herself. She'll go and do a marathon with maybe one gel. So perhaps she has got more experience than we realize. So really interesting to see how they get on. Problem is, I'm so cold that I just don't want to drink anything. So all I've drunk so far today is coffee. Predicted no rain today. I'm gonna do a pretty sharp time to challenge me a bit further, as if today's not very challenging enough. Well, I've really lucked in today. Uh, not only have I managed to uh, sit out of quite a tough challenge, uh, to say the least, look at this weather. The... In fact, it's eased off a bit. It's been pouring it down for the last 20 minutes. The guys are out there on their bikes in very little Lycra. I do feel a little bit bad right now. Grumpy at the weather. It's supposed to be sunny and I hate the cold and the rain. When I'm cold, I get hungry. It's not a good combination. All right, they've both been around on the first lap of the bike now, so they're over 28K into the bike. Uh, fortunately, the weather has eased off, although Heather looked incredibly cold, so we grabbed a gilet for her to keep her warm. Um, I put my bacon back to one side just out of respect when they passed by. I'll go grab it again. This is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done. I mean, doing an Ironman on your own on a random Thursday, it's pretty dumb on its own. Doing it without any fuel, well. I'm sure I saw our team sat down, enjoying some food. I'm probably imagining that. I'm sure they're at filming stuff for James, but yeah, in my imagination, I thought they're doing. Sure, they're not that cruel, though. 
funny as I get deeper into this starting to learn some things about myself. I mean, it's not like I've never been in these places before where I've run out of energy in a long ride. But uh, I don't think I've ever done it faster before. Well, in the first hour or so, I barely thought about food. I barely thought about eating anything. It was absolutely fine. But as I've gone, that subconscious voice has started creeping in. I started thinking about food more. I actually, subconsciously, without thinking about it a few minutes ago, just tapped my pocket to see if there was a gel or a bar in there or whatever. And I hadn't even thought about it. There aren't any gels or bars in there, unfortunately. But normally there would be, and it's almost like a pre-programmed thing after so many years of doing long rides. I've also got a bit of a dull headache for me, for me now, which is definitely an early warning sign. I mean, this is clearly a really tough challenge, but I've just been stood here on my Todd and realized I am the only supporter today. So they're out there doing an Ironman with zero support and with no fuel. Ouch. Uh, what's made it worse as well is I've actually missed Heather twice now. Once I was running in to grab her a gilet so we could pass that on to her and keep her warm. And the other time I was filling up bottles for James and Heather. So I haven't actually seen her at all. So she's had no support and she's halfway through the bike almost. Sorry, Heather. Um, but yeah, I hope they're doing all right. About 10 kilometers to go, it got real. So, started to feel a bit lightheaded. Serious drop in the power. Basically, it was what an endurance athlete would call the bonk, or hitting the wall. I knew it was coming. Sure enough, there it was, at 80 k's. Hopefully I never get to this point in a race. Uh, but if I got to this point in training, I'd pretty much immediately go into crisis mode. It essentially involves eating everything in sight. I would uh, immediately take some simple sugars, jelly babies, a gel something, and then also start smashing some serious calories like muffins or energy bars or, you know, taking a good I don't know, 500 to 1,000 calories as quickly as possible. And I'd be pretty confident I'd come out the other side. Or <laughs> well, at least be able to keep going. Today though, as I say, there's not a calorie in sight. And if, in theory, my fat metabolism should kick in, and I should be able to uh, maintain my power output, albeit at a significantly lower intensity, essentially forever. But that's the theory. The reality is I'm not sure I believe that. I mean, if I am an average fat burner, I'm going to produce about 300, maybe 350 calories an hour. And I think my basal metabolic rate is probably around 200 calories an hour leaving me only about 150 calories to pedal the flight. Which is not going to get me very far or very fast. I guess that's what we had to find out today. So this is British summertime weather and earlier I was joking about how this is what you expect in summer. It's not a joke anymore. I can't off at the British weather man and the British weather. I told you Henry James is going to come out sooner or later. Guess he's arrived. So, uh... I'm gonna have to call it. Uh, four laps, 112 Ks. I've been out there for three hours and 37 minutes plus the swim. So what's that, four hours, 45 or so. And uh, if it was a sunny, warm day, I'd probably keep going and just crawl along. I'm, I'm crawling now. I'm, at a, I'm holding like 120, maybe 140 watts at a good moment. 
22, 23 k's an hour. I'm really struggling. Um, and the problem is with the cold and the wet, I'm just getting hypothermic and there's no energy, so I can't keep warm. So I'm just getting colder and colder and colder and it's absolutely tipping it down. Um, and with no energy, I can't keep warm, so I'm getting colder and colder. I'm getting a little bit hypothermic. Welcome to the UK. So, yeah. This was um, your summer. initiation after yeah. the initiation. After my initiation, yeah. British summer, summer triathlon. Um, it's been quite an experience, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, oh, well done, mate. Learned a bit about myself. I think I'm gonna warm up and maybe go sit somewhere warm and get some food in me and then we can do a bit of a debrief. That's uh, yeah, what now. you've learned. Yeah. So that you don't like triathlon anymore. Yeah, or Britain. Or Britain summer. Or the rain. Or the cold. Some of these things are really new. Well, right now I'm starting to feel like other than cold. I guess and I'm dropping the drink so I can't move my hands. But I'm not hungry, which is weird. Okay, you got your okay, okay. So I feel like if you ever go out on a night out and you forget to eat before you go out and then suddenly feel really drunk and quite sick and that's what I feel like. It could be dehydration, I suddenly got thirsty. I drank a whole bottle of one lap. Yeah, I just so basically I had one bottle of water for four laps and then, no, for five laps and then that sixth lap I just drank a whole lot of electrolytes and I'm still thirsty and I think I could be feeling this terrible because I'm dehydrated it's hard to know if it's that or lack of sugar but I am also craving jelly babies so it could be sugar that I need I don't know yeah I don't feel great all of a sudden but I've only got 9k to complete the bike and then we'll, we'll think about the run when we get there. 6k to go and it's suddenly now like the 170 or 160k felt so easy and I've only got 6k to go and it feels like it's impossible to ride 6k. I don't really get it because I wouldn't bump 170k into a ride but I've obviously not had enough glycogen in my muscles for that, so I've been eating fat, but something's changed. Something's just hit me. Big time. And I don't think it's just the thought of the run. Oh, God. Oh. No, it's just such a weird one because I, I never like to give up on anything. And, and it's weird because I know if I, if I stopped, I could eat. But I want to try and do this, so. But it's weird when having to listen to your body but in any normal circumstances if I was listening to my body right now I would have some sugar and everything would be fine but and now I can't do that so the only other option is listen to my body and ignore it or listen to my body and stop and not complete the Ironman so yeah it's very weird weirdly I, I've got three k to go, that's six hours now on the bike and I've only ever done two Ironman events and my bike was about six hours in those and 
I train, so yeah. And I'd obviously eaten when I did them. So it's a bit strange that I, apart from the fact I feel absolutely dreadful right now, there's not much difference from when I've eaten. However, I did then go on to complete a marathon and I'm not sure that's going to happen. That. Oh, me. Same pain again. Oh, geez, everything's moving. Yep. Oh. That was me after Eddie case. So you doing well? <laughs> I don't know if it's dehydration or because I literally drank. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Well, slowest transition, but that's not the challenge today. The challenge is to see if it is possible to do an Ironman without fuel. And I'm doubting that it's possible, but let me get on the run, see how far we get. So yeah, the horrific dizziness of just feeling like everything is moving, that's gone. Doesn't mean I feel great. As it means I feel better. Um, I still feel a bit sick and I'm worried that actually my limiting factor might be a stitch. I've got a mild stitch at the moment and I have in the past had a stitch when my stomach's empty, which sounds stupid, but the thing for me. I had a quick look at my glucose numbers and it's really odd but they've gone up. I don't know if that's affected with caffeine or running, but where's that come from? It's gone from 60 up to 90 in quite a steady line. I mean, it'd be amazing if it keeps going, but I don't really understand the logic there. Maybe just being upright, caffeine. Psychologically I feel better, but I can't figure out what's happening physiologically. So no idea what is going on. I am surprising myself with the pace at the moment, but it's what feels comfortable, so I'm just, I'm not overthinking it. I'm not running to a pace, I just look at my watch every time I beat the K, and they're all, apart from the transition, which I walk, so that's every three and a bit K, they're all around five minutes. So I'm still going. 26k in, but I, my stomach's starting to complain a little bit. So, so I'll have a quick bathroom stop um, and back on the road. Who knows for how much longer? But there was a bit of a stitch coming on the right hand side. That's kind of not got worse. That's another 458k. So I'm still on pace, even though it feels slower. starting to have this internal debate now. So, 32K and I just had a check on my blood sugars and they're just kind of not doing anything and I want them to just crash because I want to stop. Um, and I'm really debating what to do. The boys have been patiently waiting for hours and I'm starting to feel really quite rough. Um, yeah, it's getting close to crunch time. I'm not sure. I've got another 10k in me or that I, that I really need to push myself into that dark place. But in a race, that's a 5.15, so 10 seconds slower on that k. Um, so yeah, I'm starting to sort of think about where this might end now. Oh. I haven't finished, but I finished. Ah, you finished, yeah, yeah. yeah brilliant. Ah. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Very good. I'm just starting to break a bit. Oh, yeah. Like, just feel a bit rough. 
Yeah. <laughs> Not surprised. Yeah. Funny that. Yeah. <laughs> Funny that. Oh. Very and impressive. Then, really impressive though. Really. Thirty-three k. So you guys might be like, why don't I just do another nine? Um, might sound big-headed. I could. I mean, uh, my total time is about ten hours at the moment, taking out our very long winter transitions. So I've got another seven hours to do nine k. So I'd like to say that, yes, you can do it unfueled. You can come back at me and say I didn't, yeah. But I don't need to break myself anymore. I'm done. There's no t-shirt for this one, is it? Exactly. <laughs> Not in the finishing medal. So what's the point? We'll make you a t-shirt. Oh. Brilliant. That was really good. Oh, thanks. That was yeah, amazing. Well done. Thanks, oh. All right, so it's been a couple days and quite a few meals since we went through that uh, fairly traumatic event of trying to do an Ironman with, with no fuel and we've crunched our Super Sapiens numbers, so our blood glucose and we were tracking it the whole day. Uh, some interesting numbers and some interesting uh, analysis that comes out of it. Yeah, I mean we've got the line showing our, where you should be for performance and where you should be for recovery and I actually started off amazingly in the performance zone without any Thing to eat in the morning and for my swim it kind of actually went up towards the end of it which I don't know if I was kicking harder and I was using more blood glucose but I started off at 123 and then actually finished at 132 so it came out feeling fine. It's very impressive numbers in fact Heather's numbers are pretty much better than mine the whole way through because <laughs> at no point through the whole swim was I even in the performance zone I never even touched it I was below 100 the whole day and uh, I got out of the swim uh, and then I had like this zigzag where my my blood glucose went up and down for a bit as I settled in on the bike, uh, and from there, it was pretty much just downhill. Yeah, I was downhill. I never had the zigzag at the start, but I guess I started higher. But mine's just a really steady slope all the way down, and then, and I think you had this as well, but just quite a bit sooner, at around 170 on K, I just went down. Yeah. 170 on K was, she was doing really well. I felt really, I felt good, okay? I felt good in those first couple laps, but my blood, glucose was going down and then I had a serious dip uh, it dropped quite low I dropped to like hey, 60s and then I thought I kind of came through it and I felt better for a bit and I, I was okay my and you can actually see that on the graph it went back up a bit and then it seriously crashed and that was at about 80 k's it happened to be the same time it was absolutely pouring with rain and I couldn't pedal the bike so I couldn't generate any warmth and I just got what really cold. What number did you hit? What was rock bottom? I, my, it was well below 50. I went, Ooh, yeah, okay. I went well below 50 for a while and that was right when I just, uh, I didn't, I had, a, I had a major crash. It wasn't a bike crash, but it was a blood sugar crash and I nearly actually crashed my bike. I was seriously dizzy. It was, mm. I, I couldn't really see the potholes and stuff yeah. coming towards me. It was, it was quite hazardous and adding the rain on top of that, I, I couldn't go any further. Heather? Yeah. Had well, I can dip. empathize with the feeling because I, yeah. I mean, I did that and it went down to 70 and actually I started the run at 66, which was my lowest of the whole day. And I had to hold on to things. Yeah, we were, properly... we were there. Obviously, I'd finished, I'd stopped <laughs> well before that when Heather finished her bike and she was in pretty bad shape. And we were basically almost taking bets yeah, amongst ourselves done. going, yeah, she's done. We can go home yeah. soon. And um, then... I mean, yeah, this is the interesting bit. So yeah. then I went, started at 66 and it just like shot up for the first bit of the run. Yeah, and then it just kind of stayed like this little wiggle at the end and I was just on court until I actually stopped and then I felt horrific. But yeah, that's another yeah. story. Well, I also felt horrific when I stopped and I, my blood sugar, no matter what I ate, didn't come back up for a while. Mm. Heather was obviously, what happened there was she went into that fat burning zone, which yeah. we predicted you should have been able to do and then keep going at a really low intensity for a really long time, which is exactly what she showed, exactly what she did. So. Well yeah. done to you for doing I mean, that. It does it's just way show, better than me. Yeah, it shows us going at a slow pace. And I think it would be different if we were, say, trying to do a 70.3 or something. But I would love to see you come back and do it fueled. I know you're not fit anymore, but ha what difference it would make? Well, I've done plenty of Ironmans in 70.3s <laughs> uh -huh. fueled, and we but know, not in we know the, how not I in, can not do them. So I don't James. think we need to do that. And I'm definitely not doing a no field Ironman ever again, even though I never made it. <laughs> I'm just not in sure. It was, it got pretty bleak at some, at some yeah, point I there. Yeah, I, I, I think, think that we're was done obvious. with this. Yeah, I think we've showed everything we need to show. I never got into that fat burning zone where I could just keep going forever, but I'm sure I would have if it wasn't cold and wet. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. We'll do one in South Africa next time. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the moral of this is you do need to have fuel to do an Ironman, even if it might be possible. We would not recommend doing it at home and nailing your fueling strategy is really important and we've got lots of videos on that so go and check those out but hopefully our suffering has been some enjoyment for you guys please give us a like if anything just for that cold that we suffered and remember click on the globe and you won't miss any more gtm videos